Hello Tacticians, it's Nox here playing Warhammer 40k Tacticus and today we're going to be looking at Rivas who's uh, riding along in the XV8 Crisis Suit for the Tau. So, I've only just unlocked them and only geared up to Iron 1 so far and the gearing requirements haven't been too difficult so far although I'm sure that will change and it'll become more like um, our show Sil friend here where we need uh, the advanced stim injectors the uh, advanced sensor suite and the advanced drone controllers to actually get to the silver but that's not yet and we do need to be in rare and epic to get that far which hopefully i will get to but at the moment i'm sitting in iron one and the requirements so far have been fairly simple so what does Rivas actually do well looking at the active they summon two shield drones and then starts to overwatch um it is worth pointing out the shield drones are only summoned if you have adjacent hexes, uh, so be careful where you do actually do this summoning, and then you start overwatching. Now obviously you're not going to be wanting to get into close combat with this person, um, so your shield drones will probably be summoned without any issue. And the overwatch is very much like the neck one one, whereby when they approach you have one less shot in overwatch. The one thing that is worth pointing out here is the pulse uh, rifle that they do use um, only has a range of two which is very short but it's similar to the Necron one which also has a range of two and has the same ability so they're keeping it balanced there. The shield drones themselves uh, can move and do damage and um, I'm guessing they'll have the similar sort of ability that the um, sniper drones do whereby they'll take the damage instead of revas when uh, damage is aimed at revas assuming they're adjacent to her. The Cyclic Ion Blaster is the passive ability, so when they attack a, a target, it does additional damage. And if there's a Markalite, or they're a mechanical unit, it deals even more damage, which is great. It's free damage. Who doesn't like free damage? Especially against the Necron guild boss that we fight. But here's the question. Do we really want to use Rivas instead of Volk? Now, looking at the uh, abilities we've got here, we've only got a 20% pierce ratio, whereas if we look at Volk, the pierce ratio on there is 55%. So Volk has the advantage there. Uh, they both do 6. Volk has got the greater range of 3, but is a slower movement. So, whilst I don't think Rivas will supplant Volk, it's certainly going to be something to think about to have them both in your team whilst you're fighting the Necron boss. Now, obviously, I haven't actually tried this yet. Um, being Iron 1 isn't uh, enough at the moment for me to take it in, in, a, in a, against the guild boss. But rest assured, when I get to the same sort of level as Volk, I'll take them in and then we can do a comparison between the two. Now the event for Rivas has only just started and only the first 10 have been confirmed by people who have stored up all their energy and actually started going through these very quickly indeed. I am currently on the three salvage runs so I'm a bit time logged before I move on to the next one. But I always try and keep the next mission in mind so that when I get to mission 10 I'll make sure that I can do the 20 arena battles in one day so I can then move on to the next one. So how are you doing? Is your Rivas unlocked? Have you actually seen more than these 10 missions? And if you have, the wiki would love to know. However, as I said, I am on a salvage run mission, and I can actually do one of these now. So let's take Rivas in and see how they do. Make sure I'm on Xenos. And it's only the salvage run, so it's not going to be overly difficult. So let's go ahead and summon our shield drones. Let's see what they actually do. So I'm now in Overwatch, front and back, that's an interesting one. Let's click on one of the shield drones, see what their attributes are. Tau Empire, summon, moves and attacks automatically, flying and mechanical. And they do melee, physical uh, damage. So they're not going to do a lot of damage. In fact, it's the amount of damage they do, although bear in mind my Rivas isn't very highly geared, is 42 damage. But we'll see if they actually manage to kill anything during this. We'll send in Chauvel and might as well just drop something on someone and move up and start collecting. Now, as I said, this is only a salvage run. I'm not going to be taking this character into um, the guild boss missions because it's nowhere near ready enough. And yeah, I'm going to kill the one I've just marked. Never mind. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. They do actually move in and try and do a bit of damage, which is interesting to note. Now, they didn't move close enough to trigger the overwatch. 
so we'll just move up and do some damage. And it's interesting to note that they actually move away from Rivas, so you can't guarantee that these people will actually be close enough for the saviour protocols to kick in. So if a friendly adjacent Tau Empire character is hit by an attack, there's a 50% chance this drone will take the hit instead. When moving, this drone tries to prioritise hexes adjacent to friendly Tau Empire. It literally just walked away from them, especially the one who summoned it. And they are trying to prioritise one to the Markelite. So they just decided to go away. We'll see what happens next turn to see if they actually uh, save anything. But for now, let's move on around and get all these bits and pieces. This is not very uh, interesting, I know, but let's see what happens. Okay, so they managed to take one and protect it, and then it moved across to the tag to actually protect them from the nearby threat. Again, movement three is nothing to write home about, but it's fairly um, swift, in, for, at least for someone with Overwatch, because, well, actually, when you think about it, this calendar has got movement three as well. So, But we've got flight, so we can be able to move over things, and we can do small amount of damage in combat, not that you really want to with the Tau. So does the shield drone move again to close? Yes, so they do actually move back closer to make sure that they're trying to protect so that first initial movement must have been a bit of an anom anomaly. Am I not going to be able to break open this crate? Not by the looks of it today. Am I really going to be this unlucky? I think I am, you know. No, there you go. Managed to get it. Finally. Now, yes, I know, this wasn't opt optimal, but it was just to see what the drones actually do in, in, in a game, because, as I said, I'm not going to take it into uh, the, the guild, uh, the guild boss. So whilst obviously doing a salvage run isn't the most interesting, it did allow us to see what the shield drones did and the sort of movement we can get out of Revast and what it looked like on the battlefield, which you know, looks fairly okay. However, I will try this in the new thing that's coming up this week. So on Thursday of this week, we will have the new tournament mode, where we'll be able to do rarity bids, because they want to see how we fare against someone with the same strength as you. Before the match, we bid on the rarity cap that we're willing to face, and we'll only match up with players who've made the same bid, and in the ensuing fight, your characters will be capped at the mutually agreed upon rarity. Now, the rarities we can use are actually stated lower down, which can be common, uncommon, or rare. Now, bear in mind, rare can go up to silver one, Uncommon is a uh, bronze one, and the common will be iron one. So make sure that if you are going to go for rare, make sure that all your characters you take in are at that silver one, because you can be assured that your opponent will be using the maximum um, gear uh, uh, gear level for their characters. So it's for, for the best to actually make sure that you are maximum geared. Now, why bother? Um, bidding to go in rare. Well, you get some additional points if we win. Now, again, I'm going to assume that we're going to, as soon as we get to those 200 points, we'll get the requisition scroll. So, if you don't have as many games, go for rare, and hopefully you'll steam through it. However, this is also going to have the boosts mode. In this tournament mode, we've replaced the capture objectives with boosts. Little power up around the tournament maps for your squad to grab as you try and crush your enemies. A unit, and yes, that includes summons, that ends their move on a power up hex and snatches it will gain extra hits. Melee and ranged, or just melee, depending. More health, more armor, or more damage. Every power up comes with a two-turn shield to protect the unit who grabbed it. Now, is that a complete immunity, or can we still kill them if we focus far enough? Time will tell. We'll take it into uh, casual mode to make sure we can see what goes on there. And not every map will have all five power-ups. So that's interesting. We might see maps with all five in there. We might see four, three, two, one. Again, casual mode will help us here when we, it comes around. And I will be doing a video and letting you see how badly I do. But not every map will have all five. Yes, I've said that. Um, but if assigned them to a specific hex, you'll need to have five points to win still. But in boost modes, it's only the points from killing the enemy. So it is literally sudden death. You've got to kill them all 
or they kill all of you, and then game over. So summons will still be very powerful here, because what will actually happen if they kill all your characters and just got summons left? Will they declare it a win? Well, I guess they would, because all of a sudden you've got your five points. Interesting to note, you might actually want to focus on the characters rather than the summons. But how will you integrate these parrots into strategy? How will you balance the need for speed, the desire for stealth, and the quest for power? I see what they're doing there. We're looking forward to finding out. And as am I, I'm quite looking forward to this new mode. Um, it's it's going to be something a bit different. And I, as I said, I'm going to do some casual games first, just to make sure I get the grip of things. Uh, but I think this is a nice little twist. Uh, and it's going to be quite fun to check out. By the way, the original tournament mode is known as Conquest Mode, and I'm guessing this one's going to be in Boosts Mode. Uh, and their plan is to introduce multiple modes and rotate them to keep the tournament interesting. Well, that's a great plan. And as with all new things, we expect you'll have some feedback to integrate and some adjustments to make. I imagine that's the case. If some of the boosts are overly overpowered, like the one that gives you extra damage just ends up you with one-shotting everyone else no matter what, then they'll obviously have to turn it down. But if that does happen, when you're playing your games, make sure you grab that one first, <laughs> just to see what happens. And they'll be asking, doing a survey uh, after them uh, to find out what we thought of the event. And that's a great way. Let's, let us have our say um, so they know what they need to tweak. And I'm sure they'll be listening on their Discord and make appropriate changes. So what do you think of this new tournament mode? Are you looking forward to it or you wish they put a stop to the whole thing? I'm curious to know what you think, so please leave those comments, like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you next time.